Hi there. This tutorial will show you how to build a very simple stereo feedback delay effect using the Faust programming language. To do it, we're going to use the FaustWorks program, uh, which makes it possible to write some Faust code here in this frame and to see automatically the generated block diagrams in this frame up there and also the C++ code. So the first thing we have to do is to create a new .dsp file. We're going to save this file in a directory and we're going to name it, for example, stereoeffect.dsp or any other name you wish to call your uh, plugin. So we save it and now Fastworks compiled it as a pure data plugin, but we will be able to compile it with any other architecture file available in Faust later. Okay, so um, this uh, delay effect will use the at operator from Faust. In Faust, you have several ways to create uh, delays, but the add operator is definitely the simplest one uh, to use. So that's why we're going to present it. So, however, it has some uh, drawbacks, and we're going to talk about it a bit later. So the add is a binary operator that delays a signal by a precise number of samples. So if you write something like y, equal x at 10. Then this means that the x signal is delayed by 10 samples and that the values of every samples uh, that is being processed by this thing is returned uh, in the y <coughs> uh, variable. So, unluckily, the delay amounts range has to be known by the compiler during the compilation. That's a C++ thing. Uh, so, you can use this object only if that delay amount is constant or it varies in a known finite range. For example, it could be a slider. So, that's what we're going to do a bit later. We're going to use a slider to control the delay length of our delay effect. Uh, and this is because sliders' values have the range you set in sliders' definition. All right. So the first thing we have to do now is to create a delay function. So we're going to create a new function called delay. And this function will take an input signal and delay it by a certain amount of samples. So we have to declare x here as an input of our delay function. So as we said before, uh, the number of samples, the maximum number of samples uh, that will be used to delay the x signal has to be known. So basically, what we have to do is to bound the value um, of the number of samples uh, between uh, minimum value and maximum value. So the minimum value will be zero and the maximum value will decide it a bit later and we're gonna create a special variable for that which will be n. So here n will be the maximum uh, number of sample that will be used to delay x. Okay. So this value will be n minus one, of course, as in any other C++ implementation. Okay. And uh, the number of samples by which x will be delayed uh, will be defined by a variable called d. So n is the biggest number of samples uh, for the delay line and D is the current uh, number of samples uh, by which the X signal will be delayed. So to bound X, uh, to bound D, sorry, bits one, uh, zero and N, we just have to do a comparison between D and N minus one. So to do it, we're gonna compare D with the N uh, binary operator. A uh, boolean operator, sorry. Uh, finally, int has to be an integer. So we'll have to precise it here uh, because uh, 
uh, yeah, samples have to be an integer number. So this function is already declared in a Faust uh, library, uh, which is the music.lib library. Uh, we are not using it here uh, just to show you how it works. But there are several uh, delay implementation in the, in the Faust libraries that you can find in the architecture directory, architectures. All right, so now we're gonna use this delay function in another function that we're gonna call echo. Okay, so we use the delay function in echo. Okay, whoa. Great. Okay, so now we'll have to define the value for n and the value for d. Um, we don't want to have a longer delay than one second. Uh, so as everything is expressed as a number of sample here, uh, one second is equivalent to the sampling rate that is used uh, by your system. So uh, we have a sampling rate value, SR in uh, Faust, that is declared in the um, math.lib library. So we're gonna have to call and import, uh, sorry, okay, call and import the math.lib library, which is already installed on your system because it's part of the false distribution. Okay, yeah, and of course, we need to add a semicolon here. Okay, great. So, SR is the maximum value, uh, the maximum samples value, uh, number of samples that uh, your delay length will have. Uh, so on my system, I'm using a sampling rate of 42,100 samples. Uh, uh, so that's uh, this value, that, that is this value that is gonna be used. Okay. So another thing we have to define here is the value of D, which is the delay length, uh, the current delay length. Um, for that, we're gonna use a new variable, so, which uh, will be called duration. Okay, so duration is not declared yet, so we have to declare it, so we're gonna declare it here. So duration, the value of duration will be controlled by and horizontal slider, okay, and we're gonna name this slider uh, millisecond. Okay, so the default value of the slider will be zero, the minimum value of the slider will be zero, uh, the maximum value of the slider will be one. Uh, sorry, thousand because we're here in milliseconds and not uh, in seconds. Okay, and finally, the step of the slider will be zero point one. So, as we said, the value of this H slider is in milliseconds. So we have to convert it in number of samples. To do it, we're gonna multiply the value returned by this H slider. Um, by the sampling rate divided by a thousand. Okay, and then to get correct uh, values for it, uh, we're gonna convert it as an integer, because as I said before, um, the duration is a number of samples, so it has to be an integer. Okay. So now we can integrate our echo function to the process. So we'll be able to see the block diagram. And yeah, the block diagram is now displayed. So we zoom in. Uh, so as we can see, we take an input signal, which is called X. Uh, we can find it here. And X is delayed using the at operator. Uh, by a number of sample which correspond to the comparison between uh, the duration and number of samples and uh, the current sampling rate that is used by your system. Uh, so once again, the value of duration then is bounded between zero 
and the value of the sampling rate. So if we will increase the value of each slider here um, and uh, just say that instead of having a maximum value of 1000, we would have a maximum value of 2000, then we will still have our value uh, bounded between zero and 1000 milliseconds. Okay, so if I compile it and if we try to use it, that will already work. Uh, but this is not a feedback delay and we want to create here a feedback delay. So this is extremely simple to do with Faust, uh, just because of the tilde operator, uh, which creates uh, recursive signals. So what we're gonna do here in our echo function is to add a plus, Okay, and a tilde. All right. So this will compile. Yeah, it works. So what's going on here is that the plus operator is adding the input signal of the system with the feedback signal from the delay line uh, declared with the delay function. So the result of this um, addition is then uh, sent to the output and also sent to uh, the delay line, okay? So here we have a loop and the result of this loop is then sent back and et cetera and et cetera and et cetera. Okay, so now we have a feedback uh, delay effect. But as we said before, we want to have a stereo feedback uh, delay effect. Uh, so to do it, this is uh, once again very, very simple. We just have to uh, use the echo function one more time here. So in our process, we add the echo function one more time. So I zoom out. And as you can see now, we have a stereo effect. Uh, that takes two input signals that send them to two different uh, echo delay lines and then send the results to the output. Output, sorry. Okay, so in order to have a better graphical user interface, now we're gonna add some V groups uh, uh, to name all the processes that are going on in our algorithm. So here we're gonna add a V group, okay, for the final process. And we can, for example, call it stereo echo or any other name you'd like to use. So we shall see the result now displaying on the screen, all right, so we have the V group and it's in the, the stereo echo. And for echo here, uh, we can create a V group as well for the graphical user interface and we can call it just echo for example. Okay, and now we shall see the results again display on the screen. All right, so as you know, we can um, uh, display it uh, our block diagram uh, in a web browser, for example, Safari here or Firefox will work uh, as well, and we can click on it and see what's going on. All right. So the last thing that we have to do now uh, to get a working feedback delay effect is to be able to control uh, the feedback amount in our delay loop over here, because basically here uh, we can control the feedback uh, amount. So we have to add a multiplier here or here, for example, or even here uh, to control the feedback uh, amounts in our delay loop. So this is the last thing that we have to do. First, we create a new function called feedback, okay. All right, and we want to be able to control uh, the value of the, this variable by an horizontal slider. So we declare a new horizontal slider, 
we can call it feedback. Uh, this slider will have a default value of zero, a minimum value of zero, a maximum value of 100, and a step of 0 0.1. So to get correct values, we'll have to define the value returned by this H slider by 100 uh, to get value between 0 and 1. And so now what we have to do is to multiply the results of our delay line, uh, the resulting signal of our delay line, by feedback. Okay, so this shall compile now. All right, I can save it and so compile it. All right, um, I close this window and now I will open the diagram again. And if I click on one of the echo function, I can see that now the output signal of delay is multiplied by feedback. So now we can control the feedback MN of our delay line. Okay. So now our Faust object is ready to use, so we're gonna compile it. All right, so I save it again. Um, I have uh, the stereo effect.dsp here, and I created a special uh, directory here called compile, which has some make files uh, that can compile .dsp code in any of the um, Faust architectures. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste it in this compile directory. Okay, and here I have a terminal and this terminal uh, is already in the right directory, which is desktop videos and compile as you can see here, videos compile and then our compile directory. So now I'm gonna create a JackQt application by using make JackQt. So all the make files that you have here are available in the files distribution in the examples directory. Okay, so let's compile it. Usually it takes a bit of time. All right, so we have to wait for the end of the compilation and then we're gonna try to use our applications uh, with sound. All right, so once the compilation is over, we have to go in the compile directory, and in the compile directory, we have the jackqt directory, where we can find our stereo effect jackqt application. So now we open it. Okay, I will set everything to zero, and now I have. Uh, to go to the jackplot connections manager panel. So the sound of my voice is recording is recorded by a microphone that is plugged in the capture one input and we can see that um, the signal of this microphone is sent to my system so I can hear me and is sent to Cubase 4 so you can hear me and also to the stereo effect. So the first thing I'll have uh, to do is to disconnect uh, the sound of my voice from Cubase 4. So from now, you'll not be able to hear me just for a few seconds. And I will only send the signal from the microphone to the stereo effect. Stereo effect that will be also connected to Cubase 4. All right, so let's do it. So I disconnect the microphone from uh, the recording. All right, so now you should be able to hear me again. So once again, the microphone, the signal of the microphone is sent to the stereo effect and the output signal of the stereo effect is sent to Cubase 4. So now I will add some echo effect on my voice. So the first thing we have to do is to set the delay length in milliseconds. So for example, let's say 400 milliseconds. 
So now we don't hear any echo because the feedback is set to zero. But once we increase the feedback, then we get some delay effects on the sound. All right. So one thing that is very important, 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 important is that we can't change uh, the delay length while the signal is processed. And this is because of the at operator in Faust. Uh, so this is the main drawback of using this operator. And in another tutorial uh, in the Faust website, where you can find the address below, we'll be able to create and we'll show you how to create an uh, echo effect with Faust, where you can change the delay length uh, when the sound is processed without introducing that kind of clicks or artifacts or even transposition. transposition, transposition, transposition. But as we can see, but our can effect see, our is, is very well working well, now working if we now. just use the feedback and if we control uh, the delay length while the signal is not processed, processed. everything is working perfectly as a normal uh, echo feedback uh, delay effect. All right. So hopefully this tutorial is uh, useful for you. You can find other tutorials on the post website at http colon slash slash faust dot gram dot fr. All right. So thank you and see you later. Bye.